more in Trainiacs. For the last two months, basically since the day that these came out, I've been doing all of my speed work in these. These are the new Adidas Adi Zero Adios 5s. They're fast, they're spicy, they're light. Just holding them up to my face right now, I found out that they're smelly. I've got a lot of miles in them, a lot of fast miles, and I'm gonna tell you why these are one of the shoes that you should probably consider if you wanna go fast in 2020. So, Trainiacs, given what's going on in the world these days, what I've been doing with a lot of the companies that give me swag is saying that if we're going to do anything, we've gotta do something out there to brighten everyone's day. Can't just ignore what's been going on, and it's a stressful time. So what we're gonna do this weekend is we are going to be reviewing three pairs of shoes and have partnered up with Roadrunner Sports. This isn't paid, but they've given me these shoes. And what we're gonna do is at the end of this video, I'll give you a link where you can go and enter a giveaway to win your choice of any one of these shoes. Not bad, hey? Better than a kick in the teeth and just spending 10 minutes here with me, which is punishment enough as it is. But today we are gonna talk about the Adidas Adi Zero Adios 5. I like these shoes. I've been doing a lot of fast running relative to me on these shoes. The Adidas Adi Zero Adios 5 is a very lightweight running shoe. As I started running more in the Nike Vaporfly 4% and talking about how it's a great shoe, really fast, but really expensive, a lot of people were saying that I should consider this shoe. This is actually one of the shoes that world champion and Kona run course record holder Patrick Longo wears. Very, very good. I would compare this shoe to something like the Hoka Carbon Shoes, the Saucony Fast Twitch, the Asics Heat Racer. This is the lightweight running shoe that isn't really meant for super, super high mileage training, although I'll get into why I think this can actually be used for a little bit higher mileage, but this is meant to go fast. This isn't meant to be all of your runs. This is meant to be some of your runs. It's for racing, it's for your faster tempo runs, it's for your faster brick runs, and I don't know about triathlons, but we'll get into that. It's 7.8 ounces, so that makes it right in that meaty part of like the light-ish kind of shoe, but not super, super light because it still has a fair bit of padding in the heel and the forefoot. Related to that, it's a 23 millimeter heel and a 13 millimeter forefoot. So that is a 10 millimeter heel to toe drop. That means, in my personal opinion, this probably isn't the shoe for beginner runners. There have been studies out there that show that when people are getting into running, that a neutral, minimal drop shoe from heel to toe actually results in less injuries. Whereas a big heel to toe drop was actually fine for the more seasoned runners as your lower leg got stronger. You could go to a more minimal toe, heel to toe drop or a larger heel to toe drop like this. So this being about 10 millimeters, I'd probably say that you should be in the ballpark of being a runner for somewhere around a year or more before you pick up this shoe. This shoe's coming in at 140 bucks, which is, I'd say, average. It's actually on the low end of average for the real premium fast shoes out there, but the knock that I've always had on those premium fast shoes is that they don't tend to wear very well. Whereas this actually has Continental, you know, the Continental brand that makes your bike tires. It has Continental rubber on the outsole. Most lightweight shoes just have outsole, midsole material, foam exposed on the outside of the shoe and they don't actually have tough rubber on the outside of the shoe because that adds weight. In this case, this has that tough rubber on the outside of the shoe and if you're looking at it right now, I mean, yeah, I have ran in these a ton, but I've also put them through the paces. I did some trail runs in these and it was more than good. So it's fast on the road, it's also decent for trails, and it's wearing really well. As far as lightweight trainer goes, coming in at 140 bucks, 
I think this is one of the much better bangs for your buck as far as dollar per mile goes on a lightweight trainer. I've been impressed. To get it to 7.8 ounces while still having a nice tough outsole, good job Adidas. One thing about this though is that everyone's going to wonder, does it have that real snappy forward like real pickup feeling that you're gonna get from some of the carbon shoe trends that are out there. No, you're not gonna get that. This is a much, well, I would actually say it's in between traditional lightweight trainer and those super high-end new age carbon trainers that a lot of people are saying are gonna be a fad. I love my Vaporfly 4%, but I like these a lot too. And the reason for that is that a lot of lightweight trainers historically have just been strictly minimal. It's like running in a pair of slippers, whereas this has a plate that's in the middle. So it keeps the middle, if you see, I'm trying to bend it right in the middle and there's just a little bit of snap back. So while you're not gonna get that full snap from the entire shoe snapping you forward, and a lot of propulsion from the toe off, you are gonna get a nice stiff plant. And that's why I think this is like kind of in between that historically slipper-like road racing shoe and the more structured carbon shoes out there right now. So it's still got a little bit of speed, a little bit of technology to add some snap, but don't expect that boom, that really big fast feeling. And I think it's that combination of the rubber outsole with the nice stiff plate that's in the midsole here that allows this to be a better all around trainer than a lot of those more typically designed road racing shoes because those road racing shoes are really only good for going fast. Your fast brick runs, tempo runs, your speed work. This can be a day to day trainer. It can be for your fast work, but like I said, I used it on trails and these are some pretty gnarly lugs here on the outside. As far as a road racing flat goes, this is probably one of the better all around racing shoes that I've seen in a long time. You can do trails, you can do road, you can do speed stuff, you can do long stuff with it. That means that if you are only running every other day, you don't need another pair of shoes. You don't need a second pair of really beefy trail shoes and then a pair of fast shoes and then some daily trainers. As long as you aren't compressing this and then running on that compressed foam within 24 hours and you're waiting 48 hours, you can get away with just one pair of shoes, these ones. As far as the fit goes, they fit true to size, so just go with accurate sizing. And then one thing that I do like is the build with the tongue. I, I am a bit of a tongue snob. I don't like a really big, big squishy tongue like on a lot of big trainers out there. This tongue is, I would say, just thick enough. It's kind of like really, really thin neoprene almost, like that kind of thickness. So it doesn't really get up and bunch in the way. Something that does bunch in the way that I disliked, right as soon as I put these shoes on, I said to the people at Roadrunner Sports, I'm like, are you serious? The laces on this are laced in such a way and the holes are set up in a way that you cannot tug more than literally one lace at a time. In addition to that, the laces are fairly short, so if you wanna lock in up here by doing a runner's knot, you're not gonna have a whole lot of extra lace material here. So that means you're gonna to have to spend a lot of time really making sure that this is very snug with teeny tiny little fingers. So then that leads into, would I recommend this shoe for triathlon? Actually, I probably wouldn't. I think that this is much better spent in training. And the reason for that is that the shoe is extremely narrow. It's very narrow all the way up to the toes. And the issue that I have with that is that towards the end of a triathlon, your foot tends to swell and there isn't a whole heck of a lot of room around this area here for it to swell. In addition to that, you have to put on elastic laces with this because this lacing system isn't necessarily going to work super well for anyone that's trying to slip their foot into here for a triathlon. So you have to have elastic laces. And then as far as like, if you really wanted to use this barefoot, 
The inside is really quite cushy and smooth, so you could get away with it. If you have a narrow foot, if you put elastic laces on, by all means, but if you're looking at using this for a half Ironman or an Ironman, I don't know, you might have some foot problems because it is gonna be very tight here. However, it's really not that dissimilar from the Nike Vaporfly 4%, which is also fairly tight here. So it's kind of similar to that, just doesn't have that same amount of fly knit give that the 4% has as your foot swells. So who's this for? Who should consider getting this if you win the giveaway or if you're just looking at buying it? Well, number one, it's gotta be somebody who does not have a wide foot. If you've got a really wide foot, this is not going to work for you. Number two, it's gotta be a more seasoned runner. Because of that heel to toe drop, I'd probably say you've gotta be into running for at least a year or two and not have a history of injuries. Number three, I would be looking at somebody who is racing a shorter distance, sprints and Olympics, and less so half Ironman and Ironman. Finally, somebody who is looking to go fast, have a really nice shoe, but isn't looking at doing that at all costs. If what you're looking for is the fastest shoe out there and as much help as you can get from your shoe, you're looking at the Nikes. This is going to be a nice fast shoe, but it's not really gonna give you that unfair advantage. But in the end, I always judge a shoe, whether they're good or not, on do I keep coming back to the shoe when I'm done with all of my notes for the review? And yeah, I've basically been ready for this review for a long time, and then the world went to hell in a handbasket, and I kept running in this shoe, even while I have like two brand new fresh pairs of Nike Vaporfly 4%, because I'm gonna run in these for as long as I can, and they're plenty fast, they're plenty light, they're very comfortable, really good shoe, definitely worth a consideration. So, thank you to Roadrunner Sports for setting us up with these. If you want to enter the giveaway to win your choice of the Adidas Adi05, the Nike Infinity Run Flyknit React, or the Brooks Revel 2, go to a link in the description below and we're gonna keep that open for several weeks. All you have to do is enter your email address and you will be entered to win one of these pair of shoes. Your choice, not actually these shoes. These are horrendous now that I've used them. Anyway, go enter the giveaway, click the link, it's in the description below. And if you aren't yet subscribed and you like shoe reviews and wanna make sure that you don't miss out on the other shoe reviews as they come out, hit the subscribe button below. Later, Trainiacs.